marketing SEO services. Uh, the previous video, sorry, I think I didn't turn on the other light. It was kind of dark. That was shot on the Wednesday. I, I was, first part was Thursday, then shot on the Wednesday. Now it's Thursday again. So obviously I'm just switching all these videos around. I didn't want to reshoot that other one. It was too much time in editing. Anyway, let's just continue right away into selling and marketing SEO services. Okay, now. First thing that I've noticed in many forums and even people that ask me uh, personal, they send personal messages, PMs on, on Facebook, some email me, some IM me, some say, magana ba charge ko? Ito ang pinapagawa sa akin. Ay, ang sagot ko, malay. <laughs> malay balay bukid dun. Okay, so, why, why don't I know your price? This is generally how you're supposed to price your service, you know. Uh, first thing is you should know your hard cost. When you offer any type of service in any type of business, how much are you spending on anything? A hard cost is you really can't uh, decrease it. It's either, let's say, uh, you're selling, you bundle your SEO with design development and hosting, and definitely the hosting, you're paying some other service and you can't decrease that price. That is a hard cost. Let's say uh, you, you, for reporting, you're using one of the reporting tools. Um, let's say you're using Raven tools or uh, Authority Labs or something. That is also a fixed cost because that does not decrease. They pay you fix. Let's say you're using Link Research tools, which is also a monthly uh, subscription payment. Yeah, that's a fixed cost you have to pay. That is already a default part of your pricing. Now, the other thing is, what is your hourly cost? So your hourly cost is how much do you char charge yourself per hour and how much do you charge your people per hour? Now, you should know that. Now, how, how, what is that rate? And what I normally do is I would research how my industry rates, how much people are charging within an industry. Uh, probably several people have done that already online, you could, or you could simply ask. Put a poll on Facebook and ask what's the, the mean, and then you could hire these people. Uh, obviously, uh, whatever the mean uh, average, you know, what the average uh, rate is per hour, it also depends on experience. A less experienced one would go below that average, and a more experienced one would be go above that average. And that is a, uh, 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 your decision to take. And once you know that, and you know the industry average and what is offered, you know, you determine your markup. Magano ba idadagdag ko dito? Magano ang kikitain ko? Okay? And once you know that, then, you know, you know your price. And if you don't know any of these, <laughs> hindi mo alam presyo mo. Now, some of you, I know there's some people that say, uh, you find this offer or someone contact you by email, signed up an online form, saw you on your blog, asking, I want to do this, magkano yung presyo mo? And you can't come up with a price. Magkano nga ba? Tapos parang nanguhula ka lang. Nagihila ka ng numbers from the air. Uh, now, pwede naman yun, pero uh, only if you're familiar with these factors. Some people might say, ah, si ganito, ganito ang chinarch. Si ganito, ganito ang chinarch. Kailangan talunin natin para makuha natin yung project. Not really. Know these factors and you decide, you know, if you're going to make money or not. Because as we've talked about, you know, once you know, uh, once you know these, these parameters and you price your, your services correctly, the next thing to do is how do you bundle it? You know, how do you sell it? Uh, some people sell their services by the hour. Some people make packages. Some people do a la carte packages. Now, per hour, it's kind of simple. Um, whatever the client needs, you're saying, I'm going to do this. It takes me this number of hours to complete this as a rough estimate. And this is what I charge per hour. Bundled packages is you create packages, let's say SEO package one, SEO package two, SEO package three, and so on. And you define the parameters of each. Let's say SEO package one. I'm going to make one blog post a month. I'm going to spend this hours of whatever. I'm going to do content optimization to five pages. I'm going to do, and then you set all of that for what your setup ng package mo, and then you give a price to it. Although it's a bundled package, you're still basing it on your hourly rate and your fixed costs. Okay? 
yung a la carte packages is sometimes you're gonna receive a project. Uh, you're gonna receive. Uh, I'm not gonna get that call. Uh, that's my office. Sometimes in the a la carte packages is you have a bundle, and yet um, uh, the client always comes back to you and and wants to ask. Paano kung hindi ko kukunin ng link building? Content optimization lang. Paano kung tanggalin ko to, dagdag ko to, tanggalin ko to, dagdag ko to. And in that situation, those are situations where it's nice to do the a la carte. Parang pinipresyuan mo ang bawat uh, portion ng service mo instead of coming up with a bundled package. And that tends to be flexible so the client could choose, add, and remove. Now, uh, what is the advantage of each and every one? Uh, per hour, obviously. You don't have to plan anything. You don't have to come up with a bundle package. Parang wala kang talo. And, but uh, not all clients like that. Parang karpintero lang yan eh. You know, may, may pakyawan, may arawan. Yung arawan, parang binabagalan nila. Pati paglagari, ang bagal. Pero yung pakyawan, yung isang presyuan, ang bits lang tapusin. Kasi sinusulit nila yung oras. Ganun din naman sa per hour. Per hour, it's good. Uh, parang wala kang talo. Okay, sinusulit mo yung oras. Bundled package, it's nice because you put together the ideal services that you know would work together. A la carte, although it's flexible and clients like it, the disadvantage is sometimes clients don't know what they need and what they don't need. An example, if you do link building today compared to before, link building before, you just said, there get links, get links there. Uh, eh, paano, paano kung walang kwenta yung site nila? Paano kung walang kwenta yung content ng site nila? Walang gustong mag-link sa kanila. Kung samit-samit ka dito, it looks so spammy. Okay? Considering, you know, there's a penguin update, there's a panda update, there's all these updates. <coughs> the best type of link building today is come up with good links, linking to something that is justifiable to link to. Uh, as Jason Asidre, who's one of our, you know, uh, our speakers there, uh, palakpakan ka, Jason, yay! Uh, he likes calling them linkable assets. If you don't have any good linkable asset, you don't have any good content, and then link ka lang ng link sa walang kwentang page, it looks fishy, it looks unnatural, you know? And to create that link, and let's say you're doing an a la carte package, sabihin ng client, ah, wag na yung content na yan, wag na yung infographic na yan, mag-link building lang tayo. And then they don't know what they're choosing. They don't know what's right. They don't know what's wrong. So um, that is the disadvantage of the a la carte. But the, advan the disadvantage, but the advantage is, you know, it's flexible that clients sometimes like. What I was saying earlier, if you know the factors, it's not just competing about, you know, who's cheaper para makuha ang project. If you don't make money, you will close down. So ang importante, lagi ka dapat kumikita. Okay? Hindi mo alam kung magkano ang gastos mo. Hindi mo alam magkano kinikita mo. Make sense? Okay. Uh, paano kung hindi mo alam kung kumikita ka? You don't know if you're making money, pero bakit buhay pa ang negosyo mo? Bakit ka pa nag seo Why? First is, you're really making a lot and it's not is not thinking about and is not thinking about it. So basically, hindi, hindi, ka, hindi mo iniisip Kasi parang sobrang ang kita mo, kumikita ka. Parang may allowance, may room for error ka. So sobrang laki ng kita mo, lakas mong buwente eh. Now, another thing is, pwede kaya ka buhay, pero hindi mo alam kung kumikita ka. If you are a slave of the business, you love to work, you love SEO, I'm passionate ako. Passionate ako about SEO, sobrang love ko ang SEO. Trabaho ng trabaho, hindi mo alam kung kumikita ka o hindi. Minsan talo ka pa. Okay? Now, another thing is, ay puro utang ka na. And akala mo, the solution is, dapat mas marami pa akong project mabenta. Okay? So, uh, hindi mo alam kung kumikita ka, pero alam mo marami kang utang. And ala ang, ang iniisip mong solusyon, uh, dapat mas marami akong SEO projects. Maybe, maybe not. Now, the main thing that I want to say here is, uh, selling is not always about giving the smallest price. So, Para lang makabenta, hindi laging pababaan ng presyo. Para makabenta, your talent and selling, para makabenta ka is to show your customers na yung value na binibigay mo is worth their money. Okay? 
yun ang priority mo. So, kunwari, meron kang kalaban, uh, may sinabi, sabi sa'yo ng, ng, cost, ng potential prospect client mo, sabi, oh, nag-offer ka ng ganitong project for $500. Eh, itong nakausap ko sa India, sabi, $250. Anong gagawin mo? Ang gagawin mo is, ah, uh, yes, it's $250. Please ask that company what is included within that 250 and I will send you what is included in my 500 and I will tell you about the quality of my work etc etc. Papatunayan mo na sulit ang pera mo sa 500 at at ma, matatalo ka lang sa 250 magkaka problema ka pa. Okay, next thing I'm going to talk about is the low price trade off. Low price trade off. What do I mean by that? is you are willing to decrease your price because there's some good reason behind it. The first reason I'm going to talk about is uh, you're building a portfolio. Wala ka pang kliyente. Pag wala ka pang kliyente, minsan, when you're selling to a new client, tinatanong nila, uh, show me your work. Pag wala kang mapakita, parang, eh, wala kaming tiwala sa'yo. And since wala pa silang tiwala sa'yo, sometimes to get you to sell is give a lower price. And you can even be honest about it. You could say, hey client, this is my first, you're gonna be my first client doing this, but I do know what I'm doing because I have training in this, 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 I've done this, my work experience, and so on. Just give the reason why and say, as a bonus, buena mano, mas mababa ang presyo mo. But just to remind you, sa simula lang ito, just say something like that. Now, with friends, sometimes, mal kakilala natin, okay, lalo na sa culture in the Philippines, mas mababang presyo dal kakilala. Uh, that happens, minsan hindi natin ma-avoid. Just tell them, and, and if, if for some reason you really have to go through it, then just remind them, hey, kung merong kakakilalang may-ari ng isang company, ganito, ganito, kung kailangan ng SEO, refer mo naman ako. But, always remind them and tell them, syempre, impression nila iba, iba sa'yo. Iba sa'yo kasi mas mura. Huwag mo sabihin sa mga kakilala mo na gano'n ang presensya ko sa'yo. Okay? Now, another thing is possible more business. I've been doing that in the past. Not only in SEO, but also in web design projects. Um, uh, just to give you some example, back in the late 90s to early 2000s, when I was doing more web design development, uh, one of my earliest clients uh, was an owner of a company that he was also the current president during that time of the Philippine Marketing Association. And when he moved on, he also became uh, uh, the vice president, I think, and he also became the president of the American, uh, no, not American, sorry, Association of Marketing Educators of the Philippines. So he was uh, big in the marketing space. And from there, when we got that client, we got more referrals from other places. Even just the fact that we said that he was our client was easier to sell to more clients. Another thing was uh, we also uh, got a web design deal, a web development deal. It was actually a custom card, e-commerce card for uh, a businessman who is or was, I'm not sure if he still is, the vice president of the... Uh, Filipino Indian Chamber of Commerce in the Philippines and that also build up more connections that build up more sales so sometimes maybe you're willing to uh, put down that price if you know that the person is very influential and will bring more sales in the future now this could be a fake promise also from other people where they're pushing it onto you if you detect it ikaw mismo nakikita mo Ah, maraming connection to, sikat ito, whatever, famous, okay lang ba ba ang kong presyo? But, if they are pushing it, they are saying, Hey, babaan mo naman ang presyo ko, okay, i refer kita. I would say, run some background checks, you never know. Baka namimake lang. And maraming nabibiktima ng ganyan. So, eto, eto na yung tips ko, possible signs of con artists. And makikita mo dyan yung sinulat ko, hey, I just met you. And this is crazy. Do we SEO work for free? And how hire you maybe? Well, anyway, yung iba talagang sinasadya nilang manloko. They are the con mans. They are the con artists. Magaling sila sa ganito. And here are a few tips that I would say you should do to determine kung talagang uh, namimake ba sila o hindi. First is, kung tanong sila ng tanong for so many things for free. Medyo... Uh, makiramdam ka na. Uh, lolokoin ba ako nito? Hindi. Bakit puro libre? And ay kung trabaho ipapasok. Another thing is, kausap mo pa lang, 
ang dahil niyang parang nagpapasikat. Hey, I know this guy, I know this guy. Paulit-ulit niya sasabihin, hey, I know the ganito, ganito, I have contacts here, I have contacts there. And sometimes these people could be name droppers. Uh, that they say they know, they mean they know whoever, they know whoever. Actually, in the Philippines, may naranasan akong ganyan. Uh, where this was some type of SEO consultant and he was claiming to know me. And several people in the audience asked me offline outside of that event if I know the person. I said no. And he was a name dropper. He wasn't dropping the names of everyone. Hey, I know this, I know guy, you know that. But they don't really know anyone. And they're just claiming to. Another thing is, yung nagpapagawa ng website, pag pinakita niya sarili niyang website, and if you visit it, and the website has no about us history, and no phone numbers, no mailing address, no person, no name of a person, even worst is if you look at the website, it looks like a template, na binili niya sa template monster or something, that looks fishy already. You know, uh, you can't contact a person, it looks like they're ready to run away. Okay, so be careful with these types of companies. Another thing is the domain is new. And when you visit the website on archive.org or the Wayback Machine, wala ganong history. Lalo na pag sinabi sa about us, parang, we are a SEO company involved in ganito-ganito with thousands of projects. Ng ganyan. Pag sinilip mo yung history ng website, last year, wala sila. Then they got thousands of projects. They got thousands of, ano, mukhang malabo. So look into the history of the website itself, the age of the domain, and the age of the website. Another thing is name dropper. I already mentioned that earlier. And talking a big game. Talking a big game is is like, I'm hiring you to do SEO, pero kwento ako ng kwento tungkol sa personal life ko na hindi naman related, na sinasabi ko, oh, I'm attending a concert and watching this guy, and tomorrow I'll be in Paris to fly here, and on the next day I can't talk to you because I have a dinner with the president of this company. People that talk a big game and, or they say, hey, I'm driving my car and they say, oh, I drive a Hummer or something. Uh, hindi naman related sa kwentuhan, pero drop siya ng drop na parang, ah, big shot ako, big shot ako, big shot. Mm, be careful. Maybe that's what they want you to believe so that you get an impression, I am ready to pay you. Pero wala naman talaga silang pambayad. Another thing is so many reasons for late payments. Uh, let's say, I promised to pay you. Could you start on this already? Next week, babayaran kita. Hindi lang to clear your check. Hindi lang na ganito. Hindi lang ganun. Pagdating ng next week, tinanong mo uli. Ay, sorry. Ganito. O, pag tinanong mo uli, ah, hindi mo ba natanggap? Sinin ko na nga. Bakit ayaw? Ito confirmation code. All of that back and forth. So many reasons. Hindi mo natatanggap ang pera. Hmm, medyo malabo. Baka gusto. Baka nanloloko lang siya. Another thing is over personal and sharing information or excessive jokes and laughing. Uh, yung feeling close effect. Yung parang, ah, uh, so how is it? Ah, <laughs> Yung parang kinakamusta ka tungkol sa hobbies mo, tungkol sa asawa mo, tungkol sa girlfriend mo, tungkol sa aso mo. And hindi naman related. It, although it's a friendly joke, that happens even in real businesses. But, uh, doon ka pakikiramdam. Totoo ba to, Peke? I'm not saying everything that is listed here, automatic con man na to. These are just signs na, na makikiramdam ka, especially if more than one, two, or more, or all of this fall into the description of the person that you're talking to, ah, medyo malabo na. Uh, so, uh, these are just some signs, kayo na bahala mag-decide, and, and, uh, and all of this, the reason why I'm talking about it is, I have heard so many stories in the 24 in the 24-7 SEO organization Philippine Skype group of people na they get mad. May mga tao dyan sa members ng group natin na na kesyo sinasabi, si ganito ang manluloko, hindi ako binayaran, ganito, ganito ginawa ko para sa kanya. And usually, talagang manluloko talaga yung nagpapagawa. Now, another thing that I want to say is, once you do get a, a, a good price, a lower price for a good reason, let's say marami siyang business contacts, dami din, uh, or ginawa mo sa kaibigan, or you're building a portfolio of, a, of a, so let's say your very first client, medyo mababa ang presyo, dumami na yung client mo. Pas yung very first client mo, nagpapagawa uli ng SEO, ng ganito, nasanay siya sa lumang presyo. You have to mention to them early on, when you when you when they come in sasabihin mo ah, ma'am sir ganito ang presyo ko pero uh, sasabihin ko sa inyo ginagawa ko ito ngayon this is a first time deal it's special for you ganito ganito uh, next year when the next time we have all this service it would be more expensive 
just say that right away. Now, yun yung pangkagat nila para sumama sa iyo. Yun yung first client mo eh. And then galingan mo, patunayan mo matindi ka, be really concerned, make them really happy to the point na pag nawala ka, feeling nila uh, mawawala din ang ranking nila, babagsak ang business nila or what. They have to really feel your importance and really make make it show, really do good work. And once they see that, pag nagtaas ka ng presyo and say, this is my real my real price, papayag din naman sila. Kung ayaw nila, may wag. Then just go on with your other clients. Thank you for building up my portfolio in the beginning. Okay. So, another thing that I always hear in the forums, a proposal. Everyone's asking, paano ba magsulat ng proposal? May nagtatanong sa akin ng proposal. Ano ba isusulat ko sa proposal? Okay, for the next part is talking about proposals. You know, everyone makes proposals. Some of us make it better than others. Iba walang kwenta, iba may kwenta. Anyway, why am I talking about this? Because it is also a common question that pops up in the SEO forums, in SEO organization Philippines, even in the non-existing originator forum that started uh, some of the core members came from. And it's even a common question on Facebook, on the SEO too. Uh, someone's asking for a proposal, how do I write it? What do I put in a proposal? Show me a sample. And I would say, I am not always the Best, I like sharing lots of information, but I don't like giving out sample of my proposals. But as much as possible, I want you to know what I put in a proposal, but I'm not exactly giving my own proposal. Okay, so a great proposal is sometimes the deal closer. Sometimes, let's say there are three people that submit proposals. Uh, and sometimes, the, and let's say the two others are just an email, a bullet list of things, itong gagawin nila, and you have a formal proposal with a plan, sometimes ikaw ang pipiliin. Lalo na kung pare-pareho lang ang presyo nyo, kakatalunan lang sa how you present it, a proposal makes a difference. Uh, and that's what I'm saying, you know, a proposal is not just an email, it's not just a, a bullet list of items, tapos may presyo sa dulo. It's proposal not saying, ito gagawin ko. Uh, link building, uh, gagawa ko link building, gagawa ko ng content uh, optimization, palitan ko title text mo, key keyword research mo, kakatanggap ko ng report. Ito ang presyo. Not really. That's not how a proposal works. A proposal, you know, is, is I would say that there's no specific format. Uh, and it's really just showing the client what value you could give. Ano ba ang value na ibibigay mo sa kliyente? Pag ikaw ang hinayar. Now, just keep that in mind whenever you're writing something. And so when you say link building, whatever, 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 okay, so what? Why? Okay, that is the main thing that you have to answer. And when you say why, why hire me? Or us, if you're a company. Bakit ikaw ang dapat piliin? Bakit ako ang dapat piliin? First thing is you have to know what is your unique, unique selling proposition. A unique selling proposition or USP. Ano ang unique sa'yo na wala sa iba? Ano yung proposition na yun? Some people ko talk about core competency. Masang ka magaling. Nasang ka expert. That makes you uh, different from others. Some people call this your key differentiators. Paano ka naiiba sa iba? Bakit ka iba? Bakit dapat ikaw? Okay? And some people talk about barriers to entry. Uh, what do you do that is kind of unique na nahihirapan gayahin ng ibang tao? Yun ang barriers to entry. Now, all of this, kahit ano man yan, ang tawag ko lang dyan is why I rock. Okay? Whatever the reason is, bakit ako? Bakit matindi ako? Why I rock? Yeah! Okay, whatever the reason, basta ano yung pinakarisan, bakit ikaw? That should be in your proposal, okay? So, uh, you're not only able to walk the walk, but also talk the talk. You have to have information to back that up. Okay, your proposal could be written great. Ah, matindi ako ganito, ganito, ganito. But, how could you prove that to a client? It's nice to show that with existing clients in the past our past clients and show some success. If you don't have that and puro salita ka lang, baka hindi maniwala. Pwede mabola mo, pero kung hindi madaling bulahin yung ano, yung, yung, yung prospect, they want proof. So aside from coming up with a good proposal, be prepared to, to show uh, some proof that you could do it. Focus on what you're good at and that is the main selling point. Let's say magaling ka sa web development, magaling ka sa code. 
then your proposal should be focused on I am good in implementing all of these on-page issues. Let's say magaling ka magsulat. Then yung proposal mo, yung why I rock is more about uh, I write link baitable content that users love, that search engines love, it looks natural and people link to it. Okay? So look at what your core strengths are and make that your selling point. Be honest uh, in saying what is not your expertise. So it's like saying, hey, I'm going to sell you a whole SEO package. My strengths are really writing. Uh, I would say that I'm not the best uh, web developer in the world, but don't worry about it because we have a team for that. We've partnered up with this company or uh, we have this person or uh, whatever the case is, kung paano mo sinosolve yung solution na yun. Instead of saying, hey, I'm good in everything, I'm good in everything. Uh, sometimes makakabola ka ng ganyan, sometimes hindi. Now, here's a small story. American Red Cross, Business Online, multiple companies sent proposals to American Red Cross. Red Cross chose Business Online. Why? Because American Red Cross said, we chose you because you're the company that said no. And what they mean about that was, Red Cross was asking, all of these SEO companies, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? All of these other companies were saying, yeah, we could do it. Yeah, we could do it. Yeah, we could do it. And when it reached business on time, can you do it? They were saying, ah, no, we can't, but we could do this. No, we can't do that because it's impossible, but here's an alternative or here's a better way. Uh, just saying that the no part of it, just saying the no made it look more credible. So that is something that you might want to uh, do. Be aware that in doing something you are not familiar with may lead to losing money. Okay, if you sign up a proposal, sinabi mo gagawin mo lahat to, umuo ka lang sa uh, lahat, then may isang parte na parang hindi mo alam, na inisip, ah, kaya kong pag-aralan yan. Ah, be sure about that. Before you say yes to anything, do some research before you close a deal. Uh, you might close a deal and, and suddenly nalaman mo ang hirap pala gawin nito. Hindi mo kaya, hindi na budget, out of scope, talo ka, negative ka, magkakautang ka pa, magagalit pa sa'yo kasi delayed. Be sure what you're accepting. Uh, you can't always say yes to everything kahit hindi mo alam. Make sure you know what you're doing. And if you don't, find the people before you close the deal para sigurado talaga yung presyo. And if you do make a mistake, then charge it to experience and education. Ang mga yari niyan is, what Robert Kiyosaki says is, there's really no mistakes in business. There's only lessons learned. So kung magkamali ka man at natalo ka na negative ka, wala sa pilitan. Talo ka talaga. Then, but at least you know what to do the, the next time around. So the important thing here is when you write a proposal, aside from writing what you will, will do, bakit ikaw? Bakit ikaw dapat? Okay? Now, once na mention mo kung bakit ikaw, and you talk about the benefits in your proposal, you will benefit from us. Because I rock, you will benefit. Why? And you talk about all these whys. You know, the when, the where, the how, the what, the who, why, and all of these. Just answer all of these questions. And once they see those benefits, uh, it gives more strength to your proposal. Another thing is you set goals, okay? If you set goals, you set the expectation correctly, okay? Kasi minsan iba lang yung expectation ng client eh. Let's say uh, you give a proposal, you say, I'm gonna sell SEO, okay, SEO, sense. And then ang iniisip ng kliyente, pag nag-SEO ko, lalaki ang kita ko galing sa search engine. Ang nasa isip mo naman, pag nag-SEO ko, gagawin ko siyang number one, dapat mula siyang reklamo. Oh, disconnect. You have a different goal there. Your goal is to be number one for a keyword. The goal of the client was to make more money. Oras na nag number one, hindi lumakikita niya. Walang nabenta. Suddenly, magre-reklamo siya. Ayaw kitang bayaran. Hindi naman kang lumakikita namin. Hindi sulit ang pera ko. Hindi sulit ang SEO. Set that goal early. Make the expectation correct. State it in your proposal what, the, what, what you want to achieve and what you could do. And even do that brainstorming before doing the proposal. Set a meeting and discuss with the, with the prospect uh, what are their expectations, what they want to gain. And you explain what is possible and what is not possible. Okay? Uh, if you don't have a goal, 
you can't really determine if your project is successful or not. Okay? And that was what I was saying earlier. Baka may disconnect kayo. Okay? Uh, if you also don't have a goal, you never know if the project has ended or not. Let's say in your goal, in your head, is I just want them to increase um, to rank number one for these 10 terms. Which, personally, I think that's a bad goal. But let's say that was your goal. And then determine, and, and para sa'yo, nung umabot na yung ranking number one for that 10 terms, oh, feeling mo, oh, number one na, tapos na ang project. And then, yung client mo, sabi, oh, dito mas ang traffic namin. Oh nga, number one kami dito sa, number, sa 10 terms. Hindi naman to mas ang traffic. Ayaw kitang bayaran. And then they say, and then sinisingil mo na, oh, sinisingil na kita, tapos na ang trabaho ko. Sabi niya, hindi pa tapos. Hindi nga to mas traffic ko eh. Okay, set the goals and make sure that you have congruent goals. You are aware of, uh, you and the client has the same uh, expectation of the goal so that it doesn't cause problems in the future. And once you have that goal and you discuss it verbally or by email, you put that in the proposal. Our goals are to do this. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, now, aside from setting goals in your proposal, provide direction. You want to have a project plan. Para alam ng kliente, uh, saan ba talaga patungo yung project? They have a good expectation. Ano ba ang mangyayari? Itong step na to, itong step na to, itong step na to. And aside from that, they also know the timing. Uh, this step would take two weeks, this step would take three weeks, this step would take one week. Para in the beginning, alam na nila kung ano mangyayari. Sometimes there could be some disconnect pag, uh, let's say you don't talk to a client for, for two weeks kasi um, you're gonna do this specific task that takes you two weeks. And then, let's say hindi mo siya tinawagan, then kinausap mo after two weeks, then biglang sinabi, ano ang ginawa mo? Binayaran na kita, ba't wala kung di ka man lang nagsasabi kung ano ginagawa mo? And if you set the project plan and you also set the contact dates, you could even plan that ahead so that hindi magre-reklamo ang uh, client mo from the very beginning. Pwede niyang sabihin, uh, pwede ano, uh, 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 hindi na siya mag-expect. Basically, just set the expectation. Have a project plan, set the timing, set, uh, and everything. Uh, explain the value of each and every step so that it doesn't look like uh, parang linolokom lang siya na parang, ah, ito yung mga step ko. Uh, kunwari, madami yung ginagawa. No, just... Put the steps in there, put valid steps, and say why they are needed. Put the exact task. So uh, typically, let's say you have a project plan, you say, okay, in the first week or first two weeks, I'm going to do keyword research. I'll find the best keywords for you that we're going to target. After that, I'm going to send it to you, ask for approval, if it's good, if it's not. And if it's good, okay, check, we're going to use that. This is what we're going to optimize for. Next thing, it's up to you. Uh, let's say we're going to do uh, on-page SEO. We're going to fix the code, and, uh, so swap out this code in here, clean it all up, improve page speed, H1 tags, title tags, uh, alt images, and stuff like that. And then let's say if I'll do that for three weeks, and then let's say for two weeks, I'll do content optimization. I'm going to look at your content, rewrite it, add some heading tags in here, add some title tags, meta descriptions, and so on. And then after that, um, I'm going to do it only for 10 pages, and then after uh, two more weeks, I'm going to do 10 more pages. And then let's say for the next month, I'm going to do a blog post, I'm going to do a guest blog. Just basically lay out the plan. State all the steps. Don't let them hang in. They have to know the plan from the very beginning. And include that plan in your proposal. Okay, so what did I say already? Why you rock, why I rock, and then on yung goals mo, what is the goals that you, both of you, have agreed upon. Next is provide a project plan so that there's some direction and even justifies the price. Kaya ganito kamahal ang binabayad mo kasi ganito kadaming trabaho ang ginagawa. Okay? Now, you have to show how your plan ties up with your goals. Okay? Para makita mo, you are both working to that direction. You're both working to the same goal that you have pre-approved in the beginning. Now, Growth and risk taking. Bakit ko nga magustong pag-usapan ito? Uh, risk lives in the middle of success and failure. Okay, everyone will fail at least once in something. Okay, so what am I saying here? Basically, what I'm saying is, uh, 
when you do something, even when you do SEO, sometimes you could do things that that are it makes sense on paper, it makes sense based on research, it makes sense in everything. But sometimes not everything goes as planned. Sometimes mistakes could happen. And if you mention this early in the beginning, if you mention this early in the beginning, uh, sometimes some keywords could increase, sometimes it could go down, sometimes it could fluctuate. Make the client aware of that. Don't always, make, don't always say, oh, your keywords are going to go up, up, and up, and forever up. No, sometimes it goes down. And when it goes down, you have to make them aware of that. Okay, but you have to sh say that it is a calculated risk. Let's say you, you're targeting uh, 100 keywords and you want to improve the ranking of all these 100 keywords. You ha just play the numbers game. Let's say majority of these words will improve. Some of them may go down, some of them may not improve at all. Now the difficulty of ranking keywords is all different. Some would be faster, some would be slower. Tell that to the client early. Tell that as early as possible because if their expectation is, you know, uh, some would go up, some would go down. And you just have to say that the bottom line should increase. Um, and as long as you're not taking too much risk and you're making sure that you're making calculated risk, uh, uh, you should be fine. And, and somehow, uh, this is kind of similar to, if I want to draw an analogy of a, of a good strategy, this is uh, somewhat similar to the stock market. You don't really know if a stock is going up or down. No one really knows. What the case, the price of the stock is supply and demand. And what you have to do is just play with probability. If you play with probability and do some statistics and you always lean on the higher probability of being successful, then you are going to be successful. So, ganun din sa SEO. If 9 out of 10 chances, changing the title tag would increase your ranking based on experience, then might as well change the title tag. Uh, if it does go down, you could switch it out anyway. But just tell the client, pwedeng mga ba ang ranking? Pwedeng mawala. Uh, just be safe about it. Just be safe about it. Set the proper expectation. Okay? Now, keep contracts clear. When I'm talking about contracts, you know, uh, your goals and your KPI should be written there. Uh, we're going to work to achieve this goal. Because kung wala, kung wala ang goals mo sa contract mo, sabi nila, ah, hindi pa tapos ang contract. Kahit sa'yo, tapos na. Ginawa ko na lahat. Na. Nag-keyword research na ako, pinalitan ko title tags, pinalitan ko metas, nag-on-page ako, nag-link build ako, nag-post ako dito, dito, tapos na ang SEO. But if the goal was just to complete, down, complete every task down the list, then it was achieved. If that is not the goal, then you're not finished. Be sure what the goal is. What, what, what are your goals and what are your key performance indicators? Um, uh, what is a good goal? A good goal is something that, you know, is achievable. You're not going to lose, of course. So let's say the goal is to increase organic search traffic. You don't say in the contract that their organic search traffic is going to double or their organic search traffic is going to increase by 40%. You don't know that. You don't know if you could really reach the target unless you're really challenging and you're, you're, you're pumped up to challenge. You know, you, you like challenges and you want to do that. Why not? But if not, and you want to go more on the sure ball, that might it's going to really going to, uh, uh, going to go down correctly, then you're just stating your contract that your goal is to increase organic search traffic over time. Uh, then you don't give a number, you don't say 40%, 33%. Uh, you don't put it in the contract. But during the sales process, if they're asking, gano ka taas ba mag increase ng organic search traffic? And then still you can't promise that. Uh, and my normal answer there is, I can't promise you anything. I can't say that it would increase by this percent. It's all different from client to client. Although in our current client, similar to your business, this is what we experience. Boom, 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 boom. Mention mo na lang isa-isa about isang client mo, ano yung mga successes in traffic, and then let them think of what you can do, okay? But never promise them a number, never promise them a ranking, never promise them a number of keywords that would be ranking, okay? So, that finishes up all the first part. 
the first part, which is we talked about the introduction and all of the selling part, you know. And when we talked about the selling, it was mainly about uh, knowing your price and writing your proposals. Uh, I think we could go more into more details of how to specifically do this, but we don't really have the time to do that. Right now, that is the time that we're allotted. I still want to go into the SEO business operations, and we're going to talk about that more. Okay? Now, ito na yung ring. Open Gangnam Style! Gangnam Style! Gangnam Style! Okay.